Hi Juicers, welcome back to the SEO 101 for Creative Businesses tutorial. This is the online content for learning how to put SEO onto your website. This is the second video in the series of three. The first one went over SEO basics and keywords. So if you haven't seen that one, if you happen to land on this first, you might want to go back and start with the first one. So that this content will make much more sense to you as we go over it. So today we are going to go over how to add SEO to your images. And by images, I mean any photographs, any logos, or um, any JPEG type uh, images on your website or in your blog. And in the world of SEO, you want to make sure that you understand that your image file names are also very important. And this is something that we often uh, don't even think about. And it's, it's actually really helpful uh, in your SEO because Google um, will rank higher an image if the image and the text that are surrounding that image, so in other words, the title of that image, um, relate and connect to each other. Google can do a decent job at figuring out that um, a, an image of a cat is a cat uh, and if you have an image of a cat and your title has the word cat in it Google agrees with you and will push that up higher in the search uh, the search field so your image file names are really important here is an example of one of our uh, beloved creative juicers and I pulled this directly from his website just to show as an example and he has a great sense of humor on um, how he's trying to get this going. So don't feel bad that I'm making fun of him a little bit. We are, I'm sort of making fun of all of us when I make fun of this because I think we've all done this before. So um, I pulled this image off of his website and the name of the image is this, foca underscore thumb underscore one underscore floral abundance low. Now I bet you can figure out why he named it that for his own purposes. Uh, this is obviously a photograph, and uh, it's a thumbnail size, and the name of the image is Floral Abundance Low, low res. That is great for his own purposes, and I have no problem with people having files uh, named exactly the way they need to understand how they're named. But when you upload this to your website or to your blog post, you're going to want to consider changing that, because as you can imagine, Google is going to look at that beautiful painting and it's going to also be reading the title and foca thumb floral abundance low has no relevance <laughs> to Google and someone searching for this particular image if they were at all interested in searching for abstract art so if you imagine all of your images they're probably named something similar to this and there, there's a better way so I'm going to show you how to do that the first thing you want to do is start with the main subject of your photo. So when you, this is in reference to how you're going to name this image, what is the general subject or the main content of the image? Um, and in this case, one solution would be that it's abstract art. That in its most basic form is what this image is. It is a piece of abstract art. So then the, the second thing you want to include in the same title, in the same line, is a little bit more description. So you might want to say what is more specific uh, about this image that starts to differentiate it from all other abstract art. So in this case, we just chose mixed media painting because that's a little bit closer to what it is. It uses mixed media. Someone may be looking for something with mixed media. Someone may want to look for paintings specifically as a um, correction against the, uh, the idea of just plain abstract art in all categories. They may want paintings. So uh, we're starting with abstract art. Then we're going to go to the mixed media painting as the second description. And then, at the very least, at the very end, you add your own information. So this may include your name or the name of your business, maybe the title of the work if it's artwork, and also I always suggest including a copyright if you can. And um, that copyright symbol is actually, like on my computer, it's option G, and that doesn't always translate to uh, 
all formats online, but it's still worth giving it a try. You might even write the word copyright, and that might help keep the honest people honest. It's not going to call stop people from stealing it completely, but it does help. So the end of the name of this very long name for this particular image is Floral Abundance. That's actually the name of the image. So if for some reason people knew the name of the painting or the artwork or the thing they were trying to look for, that's included by Frank Satogata, who is the artist. So anybody, again, if someone had Googled Frank Satogata, they'll probably come up with this painting. So very relevant, makes a ton of sense. It's super long, but that's okay. Google doesn't care how long the image names are, actually. Um, I mean, I don't think you should do a paragraph, but let's be, let's, we can be a little bit longer than you're probably thinking. The final image name is going to be something like this. Abstract Art Mixed Media Painting Floral Abundance by Frank Satagata, copyright 2017. Those uh, hyphens are just replacing the spaces because the names usually can't have spaces in them. Someone recently asked, um, if it's okay to, well, first of all, have something this long, and yes, it's definitely okay to have something that long, as long as what you are writing in there is very relevant to your um, to the content that you're putting up there. I have included in the links and also in the ebook that um, correlates with this workshop, and and um, in there is a worksheet that can help you kind of do this. It's a little bit overwhelming, so it's a little bit awkward at first. You're going to go back to your keywords and be thinking about your keywords, but the worksheet will help you sort of, sort of walk through the process a little bit. I give you a line for the first thing, which is the general subject, and then the second one, which is the description, and then the third one, which is your content. So it just kind of helps you walk through the process a little bit easier. I find this a little bit awkward at, at first. Um, and definitely uh, you want to use those keywords. So here are a few SEO image naming tips. You may want to keep separate image files on your computer. As I mentioned with the first painting name, that was relevant to his files, and I think that's perfectly legitimate to have something that you have your own system of finding your artwork. Um, hopefully you do, not everybody does, and they wish they do. And, um, and if you have a system, don't, don't stray from the system for yourself, but make an additional folder and for your online images specifically and have those named correctly so that you've got two options and you can still find the ones that you need to find. You want to update the most important images first. So if you have hundreds of images on your website or through your blog posts, you don't have to go back two years and uh, change all of those images. Go through and change the most important ones, the ones that appear on your home page and very popular pages. Make sure you start including this type of content in your, um, this type of image naming in your blog content. And um, so do, do the most important images first. Don't get super overwhelmed. Just start keeping it in mind as you start moving forward with your, um, with your new content. You want to make sure that you're using keywords, and again, back to your keyword list, use your keywords in your image names. That's definitely going to help you. Um, there are also options in many websites to have captions. You can do the same process in your captions. Make sure that you include um, your keywords, and then also in the metadata. And this is a little bit different on different websites, but the metadata can also be um, Actually, as you hover over an image, it's a series of words that you have decided it is um, that kind of come up. And that is actually meant specifically for uh, those who have um, seeing disabilities and can't see the website. If they hover over that, they, that's actually what it's description. It's a literal description of what that image is. So go ahead and fill in the metadata. As much information as you can possibly be um, helpful to Google will always work in your favor. So that is a little bit of how to do SEO image naming. Again, refer to your worksheet for that helpful little um, section that'll help you kind of split out what you're talking about. Use those keywords. And the next video in this series is how to add SEO to your website. And that's kind of a big one, so um, make sure you're feeling comfortable and have a cup of coffee and 
you're ready to go. And thanks for watching this video by Creative Juice. Talk to you soon.